I'm joined by the makers and stars of Channel 4's Friday Night Dinner, and they are Robert Popper. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> three cameras. And Simon Bird. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. If you could do all three. And Tom Rosenthal. Fabulous to, fabulous to have you. Now, you are here for a very exciting event. It's the world exclusive premiere of the first episode of the second series of Friday Night Dinner. Tell, tell us about it. How's it going to be different? Or is it going to be different from the first run? It's going to be kind of the same. Um, still but, Friday but, night, but still bit, dinner time? It's, it's just a bit worse. Yeah. What is it? It's kind of more of the same, really, hopefully. It's uh, the family doing sillies on Friday night. Um, it's kind of a bit faster, probably even faster, mm -hmm. this first episode, which is called Buggy, which is about your character's comfort toy. It's a rabbit mm -hmm. named after my one that I had as a kid. Uh, that looks the same. Yeah. And then hijinks entail. Simon. Yes, I do. Simon. Robert. Continue. Um, yes, the aforementioned hijinks, of course, uh, which include um, uh, my brother, yeah, uh, Johnny here, um, st stealing buggy. And um, the episode is basically a, a long chase sequence of me trying to catch Johnny and uh, get my buggy back. Uh, <laughs> People are going to say, I've got to see that. And uh, Tom. No spoilers, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Robert, I mean, you've alluded to it there. It's something that happened from your childhood. And the first series is very much based around you know, your own experiences. The second series, do you carry on mining that? Or do you start to run out of experiences? Start to run and, out, and maybe go, you maybe do go start, fiction. Do you start to run out? Um, there were a couple of things completely taken from when I grew up. Um, there's a scene where my grandma Basically, Johnny has a girlfriend who has very short hair and this sort of thing happened in my phone with a grandma. My grandma thought it was a boy and said, who's this nice young man in front of the whole family? And this poor girl was very bright red and kept saying, who's this nice young man? So that, that happened, which was quite embarrassing. But otherwise, I had to sort of use my imagination a bit more. So it was, it was a bit harder. Because right. <laughs> I don't have an imagination. So. You've got to think stuff up. Yeah. Uh, was this kind of your entry into the mainstream? Is that fair? I mean, you obviously uh, had the Time Waste of, Di of Diaries, which it, are very popular. Thank but you. Um, well, it's a kind of, it's probably is the most mainstreamy streamy, uh, thing I've done, I suppose, that I've written. But I had never written a, a sitcom been, before. You've sort of been on the edge of oh, yeah, society, haven't you? <laughs> very much. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been in and out of institutions, yeah. as you know. We all have. That's how we met. So. <laughs> I mean, you had, look, you had look around you. Sure. The Tomorrow's World spoof and, uh, and, um, and Bellamy's People, of course, which you, uh, yeah, you yeah, cropped yeah. up in. Yes, I did. From Amersham, I believe, your character. Was I right? pardon? Yeah. From, from Amersham. Yeah, where I used to live. Paul, so. from yeah. Amersham. Brilliant. Um, Do the rest of the interview as well. <laughs> Hello, I'd be quite happy to. Could you ask the other members of the cast questions? It's wonderful to be here, John. I've always enjoyed your newspaper. Oh, you're very kind. Simon and Tom, how did you get involved in Robert's project? Um, well, <laughs> I met doing him doing a Barnes mission. Did you do a good one? Um, Go on. Robert asked me to do it. <laughs> this is going to sound so pretentious, but at the British Comedy Awards, do you remember that? Yes, I did. Uh, after the first series of The Inbetweeners. Right. And uh, I was a massive fan of The Crown Jew, so it was an immediate yes from me. You were disappointed, but it's quite different. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was hoping it was The Crown Jew 3, but um, <laughs> it wasn't. No, no. Uh, and because uh, Tom, you were obviously you were previously a stand-up comic. Yeah, well, Probably do, do stand-up. Yeah, still do stand-up, and uh, had uh, a na nine, nine auditions, eleven auditions, forty-three <laughs> auditions to get the part. Yeah, people, and he was the man. Eventually, I ground them down. I was the least bad, and they let <laughs> they let me into their show. But eventually, we made uh, a show together, which I'm very proud of and very happy to be. What's that called? <laughs> <laughs> It's just called Baal. It's a YouTube. <laughs> oh, I've seen it. Yes. It's quite high content, doesn't it? It's, it's like it's like one day, but once a week. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite a high content. Is, is that a does that help you in the kind of creative process? But also, it's sort it, of, it, it doesn't. It, it's hard because it's basically, in some ways, it helps because it's the boys come home and it's an evening, but which is so you know what you're writing. You know, but then you do have to think, right? How do I feel 25 minutes of people sort of in a house? That is the whole thing. But it, I think it's good having some parameters. Otherwise, they could just go to Sri Lanka suddenly and look for king, kingfishers. They Lanka could look episodes. for kingfishers in Sri Lanka. Yeah. That would be a nice episode. Yeah. Yeah. You often do posits sort of like lasers and stuff and dinosaurs. Yeah, and yeah, things, right. I did want to do just ruin the show by in post production <laughs> right at day, the end. Every just day. mum suddenly fires a laser <laughs> at her eyes and then it cuts. <laughs> <laughs> it would be fantastic. 
people talk about a, gay, a golden age of comedy. Uh, where, where do you think it is on TV at the moment? Is it, is it easy to get projects off the ground? A commission is really uh, responsive to it because you've got Sky coming in with lots of money to spend on, on homegrown stuff that they didn't do before. You know? Well, in fact, you're making chickens, of course, for Sky. That's right, yeah. Uh, we're filming it in January. But Channel 4 really wanted a series, though, didn't mm. they? But yeah. you just said... <laughs> yeah, well, Channel 4 were desperate. They were yeah, begging it for it. Good. It's too good for Channel 4. Um, no, Channel 4 turned that down. Um, I, well, I don't know. There were no reasons really given. I think it was because I'm in Friday Night Dinner and Joe's in Fresh Meat and the in-between is yeah. constantly rerun. So I think there was already too much of us on Channel 4, which I totally understand. Uh, uh, too much for Charlie. No, but that's not to say that Sky were second choice. We're very happy to do it on Sky. <laughs> Love Sky. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, uh, we're writing at the moment. Very excited. And it would be rude to have you along without asking you about the, uh, the, the movie, the second sure. movie version of In-Between Us. What's, uh, well, what's happening there? Uh, I don't know. Um, well, thanks for, we thanks read, for I'm glad I asked. We read something in the paper the other day saying that a sequel was going ahead, but we haven't been told if that is the case. Um, it isn't the case, it's not going ahead. Okay, to thank you for filling me in. I have been also been told. We've both been told. Yeah. Okay, it's it's not not well, didn't get the emails. big news, big yeah. news day. Um, <laughs> so I, I think there's, uh, there could be one, but there's no concrete plans as far as I'm aware. Can I regard that as a scoop? They could be a no. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I don't know if you want to say goodbye to each camera in turn again, but my thanks to Mr. Robert Popper. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And Simon Bird. Good, I'm not going to do that one, actually. Goodbye, goodbye. And uh, Tom Rosenthal. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.